I don't want to die for Sweet Georgia Brown Don't know why I'll tell you why Not much sure it's been said She cuts him down She cuts him down Well, since she came out It's a shame how She cools him down Better she came out Better she ain't met Georgia nature Georgia nature Sweet Georgia Brown Whoa I'm sorry, Mr. McClelland, but William's still not in yet. The Loch Ness Monster gets sighted more often than he does. <laughs> in my office, as soon as he gets here. Mm. Oh, my God, Jonas! Sorry I'm late, Jan. You would not believe how busy we were at work this morning. It doesn't leave us much time. The jazz brand about his wedding present. Well, I couldn't he? Do you know he wasn't at work all morning? Oh, it's a bit of a nuisance. I was going to buy a filter coffee maker. Well, you worked with Vicky, ask her. I did, but she said Brian's in charge of the list of presents. Brian is? Was Vicky doing organising the stag night? <laughs> buy it anyway. Did you get the money out? Oh, well, I would have, except... You completely forgot about it. I completely forgot about oh, it. Oh, for heaven's sake, Willie. You've been sitting in a bank all day. I know, but it'd be a bit funny about us taking their money home with us. <laughs> Look, Mr. McClellan, well, rather, Adam, I know, I know what you're going to say, but it's no use. I've had enough of this dump. It's dead boring, so it is, and I can't take any more, so... I'm sorry, mate, but... Hi, Willie. <clears throat> Hi. McClellan's in now. Or rather, Adam. <laughs> I see you in his office. <clears throat> sorry, it's dump, right away. <laughs> Dead boring, I know, but there you are. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, so it's true. You have been spotted in the building. <laughs> Is this a flying visit or are you sticking around? Look, Mr. McClelland, or rather, Adam. I know it's about this morning. And I've only got one thing to say. I'm really awful sorry about it. <laughs> I was in the house already to leave and I get this piece of just terrible news. Somebody told you what time we actually start work here. <laughs> no, it's my Aunt Sadie. She, she passed away last night. We don't know what it was except that it was serious. <laughs> oh. So of course I... I couldn't leave my ma. She was awful broken up about it. Yes, well, under the circumstances. Thanks, Mr. McClellan. If I could just mention about tomorrow. Tomorrow? The funeral. I'd only need the morning off. I mean, I won't go to the party. <laughs> <laughs> the, the do afterwards. All right, what time is it then? Uh, ten till noon, one day only. <laughs> We're expecting quite a big turnout. There you go, glad you liked it. Mr. Boyd, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thanks very much. I've read everything you've ever wrote, all your wee stories and articles. They're not bad. <laughs> pretty good of you. You got a book to sign? Oh, no. I brought you these. Yes, yes. You see, I'm a writer myself. I haven't had the luck you've had, so I've not as yet had anything published. Well, I'm sorry. If you haven't got a book to sign, you'll have to move on. Oh, sign this. There are people waiting with books. Oh, I get you. Uh, Excuse me, that is my place. <laughs> I want you to read these because they're an awful lot like yours. Well, well, they're a wee bit like yours. I mean, I haven't copied you, but they're all about Glasgow, except this one, which is about Jupiter. <laughs> I don't understand. I want you to read these. Excuse me, sir. You have to move on. We've got a lot of people to get through. No, I, I want him to read these and tell me what to do with them. Look, if you don't push off, Sonny, I'll tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> oh, I see. Like that, is it? 
Once you get to the top, you can't be bothered to help anybody else. That's right, I can't be bothered. <sighs> I suppose you're too good for that kind I'm of thing. I'm much too good, actually. That's your book, son. Six pound ninety. Oh, man! <laughs> Stuff your book. I've read everything you've ever wrote. I don't like any. It's rubbish. My dub could write better. Uh, well, I haven't read your stories, then. Don't waste your money, missus. These books are garbage. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. I can make it to the top on my own. Okay. Well, we'll just help you make it to the streets. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Lucky for you, I'm in a hurry, by the way. <laughs> Malky Boyd. What does he know anyway? I'm telling you, Chancellor, that's probably no even his real name. Probably not. Tenement tales. Fairy tales, mere like. Probably never even lived in a tenement. Probably grew up surrounded by double glazing and patio doors. <laughs> All duvets and bidets and blue bat are doing the laddie. Probably not. Do you want another? I can't, Willie. I've got a date with a wonderful guy. Ooh! Woo. The bookie. Should you not be at work? Haven't been in all day. Told them I was at a funeral. Will you tell them you got chucked out? I will not tell them anything. In fact, I might not go back at all. I'm jacking it in. Again? That's your favourite song, Willie. No, I mean it this time. This time, I'm going to go through with it. Because of these. These are good stories. Malky Boyd would probably just have stolen them. I'm glad he didn't read them. Aye, bit of luck that, eh? Look, Willie. <laughs> don't get carried away. I mean, that pile of waste paper's hardly worth giving up a steady job for. Listen to who's talking. A man who's allergic to work. You haven't had a steady job since school bully. <laughs> hey, listen. Me and Tam have got the market on Sundays, the scrap midweek, and I'm signing on twice a month down the brew. I'm far too busy to get a job. <laughs> That's hardly real work, though, is it? When I leave my job, it will be to do something worthwhile and creative. And what's Jan got to say about that? believe that you want to give up your future at the bank for some silly stories that no one even wants to read. Well, well I wouldn't put it exactly like that. Well, how would you put it then? I suppose that's as good a way to put it as any. <laughs> Willie, you have to be practical. You can't afford to quit. We've been saving up for years to get engaged and you still haven't got the bus here to the jewellers. Money isn't everything, you know. I just want to do something that's a wee bit different. Oh, uh, like having no social life, no future, no money? I haven't got any of them as it is. Doesn't it bother you that we're already becoming the odd ones out? All of our friends are getting married and engaged these days. Uh, uh, Frank and Linda aren't. They're getting divorced. Well, they got married first. <laughs> <laughs> this is just typical of you, Willie. You get one ridiculous idea in your head and take it to extremes. You have to overdo everything. You never know when to stop. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't understand. Well, it doesn't matter. My friends will understand. My real friends! Leaving your job takes... Well, it takes a wee bit of planning. Well, it didn't take them this long to plan the Great Escape. <laughs> Could you stop here a minute, Pa? I want to get some cigarettes. Okay. I'll not be a minute. He doesn't smoke. <laughs> Money. <laughs> oh, so you're up at last. You know, I've been calling you for half an hour. Your breakfast will be cold. Now, you'd better buck up your ideas, young man, or you'll be getting the sack. No, I'm not. I've already quit. Yeah, what? <laughs> In the name of God, Willie, have you taken leave of your senses? Calm down. I haven't actually already quit. But I've already thought about it, and I'm going to do it. Do you know, your poor father fought in the war to get you that job. Did you not have fought a wee bit harder and got me a better one? <laughs> I will not have you mocking your father in his own home. God rest his soul. You'll not get much rest with you keeping his ashes on top of the telly, will you? <laughs> but, but what's to become?
come of you if you leave the bank. Well, I've told you before loads of times I want to be a writer. Oh, but that's hardly a real job now, is it? Harold Robbins thinks it is. Graham Greene thinks it is. Well, stop hanging around with him. <laughs> They should mind their own business. It is their business. They are writers. Come on, Ma. I've always wanted to be a writer. Oh, no, you haven't. I can remember when you wanted to be Dennis Law and play football for Scotland. I was seven. The same year I wanted to be Superman. <laughs> this is a wee bit different, is it not? You're not going to eat that. It's freezing. Oh, aye. But my mail, isn't he? <laughs> Have you been holding these over the kettle again? What a thing to say. <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. It's amazing, this place. My breakfast is cold, but my letters are roasting. <laughs> Don't change the subject. And what has Janice got to say about all this? It doesn't matter what Janice has got to say about all this. I'm 26. I ought to run my own life and make my own decisions, and I'm going to, starting right now. See this wedding on Saturday? That's out for a start. I'm not going. Don't be a red. Ridiculous, of course you're going. <laughs> Why should I? Because you say so. Why should I? Because you're the best man. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> it's a remarkable thing, Joe, in the human mind. You know that most people only use one tenth of the brain. When do you plan to start using your tenth? <laughs> Try not to staple them to your time. All set for tomorrow, Brian? Not nervous about the big day? No, not at all. Good. Marriage can be wonderful, if you're lucky. As lucky as Mrs. McClellan and I have been. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Women are complex, fascinating creatures. The trick is to make them feel that they're the loveliest, the most desirable person in your life. Of course, if you can make your wife feel that way, too, so much the better. <laughs> The late Mr. Melvin. Sorry, we had to start without you again, William. Sorry. No, no. I should be grateful you turned up at all. You can't even drag yourself in here promptly. How are you going to get him to the church in time? Oh, that's all right. I've arranged an alarm call. You could sleep through, though. <laughs> Not this kind. Willie, will you give yourself a shake and hurry up? <laughs> If you're not ready when that car gets I'm here... I'm ready. Yeah, well, if you're late for Brian... I've only got my jacket to put on. Well, if the, if the traffic's heavy between here and the church... If the church falls down in the middle of the service. <laughs> if the minister's run off with a brownie leader. <laughs> if Brian's already bigamously married to other lassies for banana rama. <laughs> you can suppose anything you like, ma, so give a break, eh? Put your jacket on. Ma, I've done it. What? I've sold one! I've sold a story! Oh, very nice, son. Put your jacket on. Lightside Fiction Magazine want to buy my story, City Lights, for £35. £35, ma! Will you put this on? Please arrange to meet our fiction editor, Kevin Morrison, to discuss the sale of more material. More material! <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this could be the start of something big. This could be how Charles Dickens started. Or Enid Blyton. Willie. City lights. Must have been quite good, eh? I'll have a copy in my bedroom. I better find it. Willie, the car will be here at any minute. What car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm warning you. If you spoil this wedding day... Ma, this is important. I'm coming. <laughs> That's class and that. Class. <laughs> Did I write this? <laughs> I believe I... Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Where have you been? You're late. That Disney matter. Guess what happened to me today? She's not going to put on a substitute if you're not there on the dot. <laughs> guess what happened to me? Go on, I guess. 
Who's your cult? Hmm? <laughs> 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 Would you look at that? 35 pounds? Something you'll beat your words now, Harry. I think you'll agree this now makes me a bona fide writer, eh? Look out for funny wee stories, interesting characters. You see, actually, I'm a writer. Who works in a bank? Excuse us, please. I have never been so embarrassed in my life. It was bad enough you forgetting your speech, but did you have to read out that stupid story of yours? <laughs> it was the only thing I could think of. Besides, I think they were rather interested. They were not rather interested, Willie. It is not usual for the guests to get up and leave halfway through the speeches. It was the only chance I got. Oh, they would listen to me the rest of the time. That's because it wasn't your day, Willie. It was Brian and Vicky's day. If you want people to listen to you at a wedding, have one of your own. <laughs> You never thought of trading this in for something with a better engine, Tam? Like what? Like a lawnmower. <laughs> no, no. It's a good wee van, Wally. A lot of miles left ahead of us. A lot more left behind. It just went through its MOT. What? You mean this past? Oh, aye. I've done it myself. <laughs> <laughs> then a burial. And I wish you'd told me you had these, Tam. I've just spent a fortune getting one for a wedding present. Well, Jan did. There are seconds, Wally. That one's got a chip in it. Oh, they make chips as well, do they? <laughs> Forget it. This must be one hell of a story, Willie. I can't understand a word there. <laughs> the people are the lights of every city. To know the city is to know the people. The city merely reflects their brilliance. It's quite good, that. I think. Of course it's good. This proves I can do it, don't you see? This proves that I can be a writer. So you gave up hope of playing for Scotland then? <laughs> well, I suppose so. And being Superman? Well, the two were always incompatible. I'd never got a Scottish cap if I was born in Krypton. No, no, no. It's a writer for me. I'll send the money rolling in. Which reminds me, you still owe me the money for that taxi fare. Oh, that's nice. You've wrote a bestseller and you still want to screw me for £1.20. <laughs> <laughs> this? I'm not going to cash this. This is a symbol. I'll frame it. I might even write my notice on it and give it to McClellan. I can walk in there any time now and tell him exactly what to do with his job. Aye? Like when? Tomorrow? It, oh, I can't. I'm meeting this fiction editor tomorrow, aren't I? But soon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Any day now. Aye, well, when you're going to sign on, let me know. I'll come along with you. Show you the ropes. The tricks of the trade. I have told you before, I will not be in and out of the social like you. I am going to be a writer. I know I can do it. It's just a matter of getting started. Funny. That's what Tam says about the van. <laughs> no. No, I'll not be at work today. Well, tell McClellan I'm going to the doctors. Mm-hmm. I've... I've lost my voice. <laughs> No, just tell him that. Oh, hello, Mr. McClellan. <laughs> I was just saying to Brian, well, I was just trying to say to Brian, what a rotten bit of luck I... <laughs> Class, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Morrison will see you in a minute. He's on the telephone right now. To another writer. Pardon? 
I'm Willie Melvin, the writer. I just wondered if it was another writer he was talking to. No, it's dentist, I think. <laughs> I wrote a story about a dentist once. A dentist who gets kidnapped by alien super beings to do an emergency filling on their leader. It needs some work. I just brought these along to show that, that I'm keen-like. I'm sure you'll make quite an impression. Uh, Mr. Melvin. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Made an impression, all right, on the pavement. Malky Boyd. I knew that wasn't his real name. He's probably not even Scottish. He's probably English. Do you know he said they wouldn't buy any of my stories if I paid them? Cheek. So I went right out and cashed that check before they cancelled it. <laughs> they wouldn't do that, son. Would they not? That's exactly the kind of petty thing they would do. I can't stand childish, small-minded people. So I went back later, shouted names at them through the letterbox and ran away. Hi, and what are you going to do now? I don't want you cluttering up the house all day. Thanks very much. So why don't you go to your work? Aye. I might as well. I'm in a bad mood anyway. <laughs> it's been a right rotten day. At least it can't get any worse, eh? You want me, Mr. McClellan? <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. How's everything? Fine. And the family? Nobody uh, kicked the bucket since I saw you last? No. Good. I've been looking at the records, William, and the last year you have lost 13 working days through illness or personal bereavement. Some kind of family curse, is it? No, just bad luck. Well, you could say that again. Aunts, uncles, grannies, cousins dropping like flies all over the place. <laughs> Culminating most recently in poor old Sadie. Oh, hi, Aunt Sadie. Tragic. <laughs> uh, Funny thing is, that I was talking to your mother at the wedding, and uh, she couldn't quite place Aunt Sadie. Never heard of her, in fact. Well, she was never what you would call close. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you, William. I mean, I felt for some time you're not happy here, but it's quite hard to tell when I see the customers more often than I see you. I've had a lot in my mind, Mr. McClellan. Oh, so have I. I've had you in my mind for a start. I mean, while you haven't quite raised incompetence to an art form, I feel it's only a matter of time. Have you ever wondered what you'd do if you lost this job? Well, actually, I do a bit of writing in my spare time. I thought you worked here in your spare time. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now, as I see it, we have two alternatives here. I can have you replaced with a machine that doesn't work, or since you're already employed here, we can both make the best of it. In other words, do you get your entire self out or just your finger? Look, look, I've been thinking. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do anything as drastic as that, William. In fact, I've already made the decision for you. You're fired. <laughs> Pardon? You're fired, William. Uh, dismissed. Uh, we're letting you go. The big E. Your cards. You're out. Who are you planning to write, William? You obviously have trouble understanding English. <laughs> Wait a minute. You, you can't fire me. I've been planning to resign. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men. Not that you fall into either category. <laughs> yes, I do. You can't fire me. I quit. I accept. <laughs> oh, at last we've found something to agree on. <laughs> And don't think you'll change my mind with promises of promotion, either. <laughs> Sorted him out, eh? <laughs> oh, my God, what have I done? What have I done? I'm 
must be mental, mental. It's all that donkey, Malky, Morris and Kevin Boyd's fault. I know what I'd like to do to him. I'd like to apologise to him. That's it. <laughs> no, that'll not do any good. I've burnt my boats there. Burnt them? I've torpedoed them out the flipping water. <laughs> and anyway, why should I apologise to him? I'll apologise to McClellan instead. Dear. I've heard all about it. Brian phoned me. Just stay there and write an apology to Mr. McClellan. <gasps> an apology? <laughs> what do you think I am? Mental or something? <laughs> you know what they say, Jan? When one door closes, another one opens. 